historian is um, getting to work with, with specialists in other fields to help me tell um, the stories that I want to tell. So I'm working on a museum exhibit about street photography in New York City in the 1980s. New York is one of my research focuses. And all these amazing demonstrations, protests, race riots. Um, and it, they're pre-digital. Most of the photographers were working on film and printing. But we're going to be working with RIT students to design a companion website. And they're going to also lay out a catalog for us. You know, one of the things that is a recurring theme in these classes is other faculty members coming over and shutting my classroom door because we're too loud, right? There's too much laughter, too much, you know, like shout, ooh and ah, you know, and people roll a dice and they fail a check, right? And that's a biggest compliment I can imagine, right? It's like, you're too loud, your classroom is too loud. That's a, it's a wonderful compliment, I think. We take um, Rochester in 1920 and basically add this steampunk component of the speculative um, you know, technology, what, what would happen if steam took over rather than electricity. And in this class we had um, a history professor give a guest lecture, we had um, a game design professor, Steve Jacobs, who's another DHSS affiliate, and then we built this world out, like, imagined a different, an alternate history of Rochester, but it's all about the social forces because there was women's suffrage, they had just gotten the right to vote, there was prohibition, huge problems um, in terms of uh, tensions between labor and management, city super polluted, there's a bunch of immigrants that are coming in from all over the world at this time, creating all these racial tensions. So what we do in, in this Steampunk Rochester class is they, they build this world out and then they role play through it. And it's a way to experience history in a sense, like a virtual experience of history with a, without a story that's been written yet. Some of what, some of what you're talking about is, is actually one of the challenges that I faced in the project that I was working on, which was the, uh, the asylum project, which was we had a sort of a non, a sort of homogenized scene where we we're all coming from the design discipline and 3D digital designers. And the end product up to the point where this, this past team had worked on it was this beautiful visualization of the asylum, which was great. And we had like beautiful camera five years and we were really ahead of the curve in terms of the small team being able to produce really quality 3D graphics. Where we started working with you was Okay, and where the team sort of realized its shortcomings, we needed we need more game mechanics, and we needed more narrative built in in order to turn this into something that would sort of achieve more of the goals of exposing the underlying historical and narrative of the uh, asylum from the 1850s and 1900s. Which is amazing. It's a program that allows you to keep up with what is coming next and also to craft you know, where your focus is going to be. So you know, first year you start out, you think I want to make apps. But by the time you are done, maybe virtual reality is where you want to be. Sometimes there's this gap of understanding about what it is you can do. You know, people on the humanities side, the cultural institution side, sometimes expect the technology to just be magic and take care of all the problems itself. And on the other side, you know, the, the computer, computer programmers to be like, well, we can do this one thing. Why don't you want this one thing? And it's like because it doesn't need what we need, right? So I think having somebody who's who's you know uniquely able to move between those two worlds is going to be very valuable in the future.